Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to wire up an EEPROM to Arduino. So to start with what's an EEPROM? Well EEPROM stands for Electronically Erasable Programmable Read Only Memory. And uh, it's a bit of a silly name if you ask me because um, an EEPROM is not read only. Uh, you can actually write to this thing and if you couldn't write to it it will be a waste of time having it. So yeah, EEPROM, Electronically Erasable, uh, Programmable, Read-Only Memory. So this particular one is made by a company called Microchip and it's called 24LC64. And as you've probably guessed, the 64 indicates its uh, memory or its capacity or whatever you want to call it. So this thing is a 64 kilobit uh, EEPROM, so it stores 64,000 bits. Um, now, of course, 64,000 bits isn't incredibly useful to us because we, we work in bytes. So, essentially, if you get 64 and divide by 8, it's 8. Yeah, 8 times 8 is 64, so yeah, it's 8,000 bytes, 8 kilobytes. So it's an 8 kilobyte uh, memory storage device. And that's not um, a great deal of memory, of course. Uh, well, now it's not anyway. Uh, considering we get massive uh, USB storage devices which go up to say 64 gig or whatever 32 gig maybe well probably even more than that now so yeah uh, 8 kilobytes is not a great deal but in terms of the Arduino um, bear in mind the Arduino is usually used for more hardware based things rather than high levels of software 8 kilobytes is plenty so um, Let's read up about this and let's uh, find out a bit more info. I've printed out um, some sheets of documentation which relate to this little device. So if I just zoom in, let's have a look through this. So yeah, 64K, right, what can we gather from this thing? It uses the I squared C protocol and if you remember rightly that's the two pin protocol with um, with SCL and SDA, uh, serial clock and serial data. Um, so, right, what else can we get from this? Part number 24 LC64, which is the one I've got. Its VCC range is 5 volts, basically. Well, actually, 3.3 or 5 volts. Uh, I'm not too interested in the rest of that. So, uh, is there anything interesting here? Right, organised into 8 blocks of 8 K bit, uh, 64K bit, that's a bit, a bit silly isn't it, but ok, um, 2 wire serial interface, boss, I squared C compatible, brilliant, um, what else, anything else is interesting here, um, not particularly, ok so let's go on to the uh, pin out, so let's go over here, and I of course have this one here, so we've got A0, A1, A2, VSS, VCC, WP, SCL and SDA. So let's start off with the basic ones. Uh, VCC, which is pin 8, is of course plus voltage and that will be plus 5 in my, in my uh, example or you could use plus 3.3. VSS is ground. Um, SCL and SDA, they are the I squared C um, uh, labels if you like. Now, so that leaves us with four that we're not familiar with, that's A0 to A2 and WP. And A0 to A2 are uh, address uh, inputs if you like to this little chip to, to give it its address. Uh, I'll explain more about that in a few seconds and WP is write protection and if you hold WP high it prevents you from writing to the chip. If you hold it low, it doesn't prevent you writing to the chip and you can write to it. So now a bit more about this A0, A1 and A2. Um, you can set each one either high or low. So if you were to set uh, low, 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 that would equate to 0, 0, 0 or off, 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 which would give um, a set address. Now I, I don't know what that address is at the moment, or you could do like this, you could hold high, 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 which will give another address. Probably address of 255 or something, I don't know. 
and you could do you know off off on off on you know all sorts it's a it's a means to be able to get loads of different addresses for this one chip now I'm going to keep it simple and use ground 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 which should be probably zero address of zero or some something simple so um, that's the very basics of this thing so um, I suppose I should say a bit more about why you'd want this you'd probably want it if you wanted to store some uh, configuration data or something like that if you wanted to store configuration data for your little project or something like that and for some reason you didn't want to store it on your Arduino um, then this would be useful so for example if I wanted to store some data like for, for my solar panel uh, power system and this thing got reset then I'd, I'd lose my data but with this I wouldn't because this would still be on because it would still have power to it so anyway that's just a quick example of why you'd use this thing right anyway let's move on so the way this thing works is that you wire it up which I'll show you how to do in a bit and then when you've wired it up you send data to it uh, of course via the Arduino using the I squared C bus um, serial bus or whatever you want to call it so these bits here the start bit and the acknowledge bit we don't need to worry about then you've got to also send this code which again I'll show you later and the code you don't need to worry about either it's hardwired or hard coded it's 1010 and you can forget about that. Then the chip select bit, that depends on how you've wired it. Now with this thing, like I said just a minute ago, I'm going to wire it to ground, 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 so I should have a, a very easy address, which will probably be near zero. So don't need to worry about that. That's fixed, you just hard code that in. This will, this will be zero, zero, zero if you're following my tutorial. Um, now that leaves us with, oh yeah, acknowledges, don't need to worry about that. That leaves us with one more thing, and that's read or write. And, um, yeah, let's find out a bit more about that. Um, it does say here somewhere, uh, the last bit controls the operation to be performed. When set to a 1, a read operation is selected, and when set to 0, a write operation is selected. So, um, so yeah. If you want to read, you'd set that to a 1. If you want to write, you'd set it to 0. Fairly straightforward. And of course, you'd do that in the code. Right, now, there's a little bit more to it as well. Um, this is called the control byte. And there's actually another uh, set of data which you also need to, uh, to pass to this little device. OK. Um, let's say we needed to store um, uh, 32 bytes, we, need, we needed 32 addresses to be able to store little blocks so what we could do is this we could have an addressing system like this we could have um, you know how many ones are there how many twos are there how many fours are there how many eights are there how many sixteens are there and how many thirty twos are there and this address system would actually work so um, so you could do this, you could say, okay, we want to go to block number 24. So what you do is, how many 32s are there? There are none. Uh, 24, so how many 16s? There's one 16, and this can only be on or off. So 24, what we'd have to do is 16 plus 8 is 24. So to get 24, it would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So that would be how we get to that particular address 24 uh, in this so let's say again now we wanted to go to address uh, 42 so 42 so there would be 1 32 then there would be an 8 because we said 42 so there would be no 16's there would be 1 8 and that would be 40 there would be no 4's and there would be 1 2 and there would be no uh, 1's so in binary that would be 42 and that would of course be whatever I said it was before uh, 24 did I say and that's just binary addressing um, and pretty much that's all there is to it now um, I mentioned that this was an 80 sorry an 8 kilobyte device so that's 8000 so in order to 
uh, being able to address that, you need certain amount, a certain amount of bits to be able to do it. So over here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 bit addressing system. And that allows for, uh, well I said before, 64 um, addresses. Or well, it could be 64 bytes. Now this is a lot bigger than that, this is 8,000 kilobytes. Uh, sorry, 8,000 bytes. So we'd have to have a bigger addressing scheme, so we'd have to have it like this, uh, 256, etc. Until we, we've got all the spaces to be able to address the thing. And this is why here we've got to specify 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 bits in order to uh, specify the address. Now, this leads to a, a slightly different issue. Um, but when you give an address, you have to actually give two bytes um, to form the address. Um, the reason for that is because the amount of addresses can't be stored in one byte. So you have to give it a byte and then you have to say, okay, here's the next byte, the next half of the, the address, if you like. Now, I'm not going to go too much into that because it can be a little bit uh, intense. But effectively, uh, what you need to do is when it comes to 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 you have to basically send whatever's this side of the address first and then you send this one hence the reason why we have the high byte and the low byte um, so there you go, that's about, that's about the addressing uh, I hope that wasn't too intense and then comes actually sending the data which is really the easy bit so if I just zoom in here, hopefully I'll be able to explain this again. So we've got all these uh, spaces here, or bits, which form the byte, uh, which, of course, represent the data, which is going to be saved to the EEPROM in the certain block. And just as I described here, I might have to zoom out again just to show you, um, we're storing a byte. So if we have eight cells, um, let's just draw this thing, so there's two... Uh, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So we've got eight cells uh, which contain bits to be able to store a byte. So if we want to uh, store the number, I don't know, 46, let's go through this again. Hang on a minute, I'll just write these. This is how I was taught to work this out when I went to university. Um, it's a, I actually didn't do a, a degree in electronics, I did a degree in computer science, but it turns out that to an extent they go hand in hand. Anyway, this is just something I picked out from university from a lecturer who, who taught me how to understand this. So yeah, um, I can't remember what number we said we were going to find now. Uh, let's go for... 52. So we start from the left to the right. So to represent 52 in a byte, this is what we do. How many 128s? In fact, I'll just write 52 there to remind me. How many 128s? There are zero. How many 64s? There are zero. How many 32s in that? There's one. So now uh, we want to represent 20. How many 16s are there in 20? There's one. And now we've got a remainder of four. How many uh, eights? We can't do it. How many fours? There's one. And there we go. So if we add these numbers together, we should be able to get 52. So 32, uh, 48, and 52. And therefore, this number here, um, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, um, in binary, or in a byte, in byte form, represents... 52. So that's how we, we we store this. So when it comes to the data here, if we want to say 52, we'd simply pass it this code here, 00110100. And that's the basics of, um, of binary and um, being able to store bytes. Anyway, enough of that. So that's pretty much all the theory uh, done. Let's leave it at that. And I think it's time to get started wiring this thing.